Hello and welcome back. This video covers the Day 16 Unit 6 Test Review Number 1 and it's on polynomial functions. Let's look at question 1. We're going to factor the polynomial completely. So in number 1 we're factoring 8x to the third plus 1. Let me remind you of the sum of cubes formula. It's a to the third plus b to the third is equal to a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. We can rewrite 8x to the third as 2x all raised to the third. We can rewrite 1 as 1 to the third. So identifying the a in the formula, a would be the 2x and b in the formula would be 1. So let's rewrite everything and that would be a plus b, that would be 2x plus 1, times the quantity a squared, and a is 2x, so 2x all squared would be 4x squared, minus a times b, that would be 2x times 1 is 2x, and then b squared, well b is 1, and so 1 squared is still 1. And so this is our final answer. All right, for number two, we have x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus eight. Well, we can factor this by finding two numbers that would multiply to negative eight and add to negative two. And those two numbers would be negative four and positive two. So our two factors would be x squared minus four times x squared plus two. Now x squared minus four can be factored further because that is the difference of two squares. So x squared minus four factors into x plus two times x minus two. x squared plus two cannot be factored anymore so we'll just bring that down. And then this is going to be our final answer. All right, here's question three. We're gonna be using long division and in long division, we have the acronym DMSB, which stands for divide, multiply, subtract, and bring down. When you're dividing, your divisor goes on the outside, that's x plus three, and your dividend goes inside. We'll start the dividing process by dividing x cubed by x. That's gonna leave us with x squared, which we put at the top. We're gonna multiply x squared times both x and the three. That's gonna give us x cubed plus three x squared. We will then subtract, and when we subtract, all the signs change, so that becomes negative, and the three also becomes negative. The x cubes will cancel out, and five x squared minus three x squared leaves us with two x squared. We'll then bring down the positive five x. Then we start division over again. Two x squared divided by x is going to be two x. So we put two x at the top. And then we multiply the two x times x plus three. That's gonna give us two x squared plus six x. Let's draw a line and now we're going to subtract. The two x squareds cancel each other and this will be five minus six x is going to be negative one x. Then we'll bring down the minus three. Now we're going to divide negative one x by x and that leaves us with negative one, which we put at the top. Now we'll multiply negative one times x plus three, and that results in negative one x minus three. We'll draw a line and then we'll subtract, and subtracting changes all the signs, so everything cancels out and our remainder is zero. So our final answer, our quotient, is the quotient here at the top, and that is x squared plus 2x minus 1, 
and the remainder is zero. Now the second part of this question is, does this indicate, uh, indicate whether the divisor is a factor? And the answer is yes, this is a factor because the remainder is zero. So yes, it is a factor. All right, your divisor is a factor when the remainder is zero. Okay, for number four, we're using synthetic division. In synthetic division, the divisor x plus six is going to become negative six on the outside of this half box that you draw. All right, the negative six is the opposite of the positive six here. So negative six goes outside, and then inside the box are the coefficients of your dividend. That is going to be one for the x cubed, then a zero for the missing x squared term, and then a negative 42 for the x term, and then another zero for the constant term. We'll drop the very first number down, that's one, and then we MA the rest of the way. That means multiply and add until the end. So we're multiplying one times negative six is negative six. Now we're gonna add zero plus negative six, and that is negative six. Now we're gonna multiply negative six times negative six, that's going to be positive 36. And we're going to add negative 42 plus 36, and that's negative 6. And then we're going to multiply negative 6 times negative 6, and that's positive 36. And then 0 plus 36 is 36. All right, now since the dividend began with x cubed, we know that uh, this quotient is going to be 1x squared because the exponent is 1 less than the exponent of the dividend. So that will be 1x squared minus 6x minus 6 plus our remainder of 36 over your divisor of x plus 6. All right, and this is your final answer. And then to answer the second part of the question, and that is, is x plus six a factor? And the answer is no, All right? X plus six is not a factor. And that is because the remainder is not zero. All right, here's question five. It says, list all the possible rational zeros of the equation and then find all the zeros. So to list all the possible rational zeros, we use p over q. And p is all the factors of the constant term, negative 12. And that goes on the top. So all the factors of 12 would be plus or minus 12, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 1. And then on the bottom is going to be q. And q is all the factors of the leading coefficient 1. So that means all of the numbers here would be divided by plus or minus 1, which produces the exact same numbers. So these are all of your possible rational zeros. And then I always su suggest starting with positive 1 and or negative 1 when you are testing the zeros. So let's start with positive 1. We're going to be using positive 1 and the synthetic process. So our half box is here, and we put positive 1 on the outside. Coefficients would be 1, 7, 4, and negative 12. Those are the coefficients of the polynomial here. You'll drop down the 1, and then multiply and add the rest of the way. So 1 times 1 is 1. 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 times 1 is 12. And 12 plus negative 12 is 0. So that verifies that positive 1 is a 0. 
the resulting polynomial from the 1, 8, and 12 is 1x squared plus 8x plus 12. Now that can be factored into x plus 6 times x plus 2 uh, because 6 times 2 is 12 and 6 plus 2 is 8. We'll set those equal to 0 and we'll end up getting x is equal to negative 6 and also x is equal to negative 2. So all of our zeros are negative 6, negative 2, and also positive 1. All right, here's number six. It says find all the zeros of the following equations. So we have x cubed plus 3x squared minus x minus 3. I'm noticing that we can factor this by grouping. I'm noticing the grouping because the ratio of this coefficient to the other coefficient is 1 to 3. All right, so that's 1 here and 3 there. The ratio of the second group would be negative 1 to negative 3. But negative 1 divided by negative 3 is also 1 to 3. So each group would have a ratio of 1 to 3 there. All right, so let's uh, group the first two together. And then let's group the last two together. The greatest common factor in the first group is x squared. Leaves us with x plus 3. The greatest common factor in the second group is negative 1 and that leaves us with x plus 3. Now we have x plus 3 that's common in both groups. So we factor out the x plus 3 and that leaves us with x squared minus 1. But x squared minus 1 can be factored into a difference of squares. So that's going to be x plus 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 1. Now if we set those equal to 0, we'll get our zeros. So our zeros are going to be negative 3, negative 1, and positive 1. It's negative 3, negative 1, and 1. All right, and these are our zeros. All right, number 7. To find the zeros here, we're going to assume that we cannot use a calculator. So again, we'll use the p over q first to find possible rational zeros. The p over q is going to be uh, all the factors of 18 divided by all the factors of 1. So all the factors of 18 are plus or minus 18, plus or minus 9, plus or minus 6, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 2, and then plus or minus 1. And then you would probably start with positive 1 and then negative 1 and then positive 2 and negative 2 and then trying each of these numbers in the synthetic process. Well, positive 1, negative 1, neither one of those work. Positive 2, negative 2, neither one of those work. And you might try positive 3 and negative 3. Well, the first one that actually works is negative 3. So to verify that, we'll just put negative 3 here on the outside. And then you have your coefficients, 1, 6, 3, negative 18. Drop down the 1. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, plus the 6 is 3, times negative 3 is negative 9, plus 3 is negative 6, and then times negative 3 is positive 18, and as you can see, we do get 0 there. So we know that negative 3 is a 0. The remaining polynomial is 1x squared plus 3x minus 6. We're going to set that equal to 0 and then see if we can solve that. Well, um, we cannot factor this um, because there's nothing that multiplies to negative 6 and would also add up to 3. So we're going to use the quadratic formula. And so that's x is equal to the negative of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. All right, that's going to be negative 3 plus or minus the square root of, and that's going to be 
9, and then this is going to be uh, positive 24, and so that's going to be uh, 33. And then divided by 2. Okay. Now this radical cannot be simplified anymore, so this is our final, um, the final zeros here. So that's negative 3 minus radical 33 over 2, and then negative 3 plus radical 33 over 2. So our three zeros are as follows. We have the negative 3 um, that came from here, and then we have these two. So negative 3 and then negative 3 minus radical 33 over 2 and negative 3 plus radical 33 over 2. And those are our three zeros. And for number 8, find all the zeros of the polynomial and describe the end behavior. So as far as the zeros go, again, we'll do the P over Q. Uh, P is all the factors of the, the number 3 on the end. So that's going to be plus or minus 3 um, and plus or minus 1. And then the Q is all the factors of the leading coefficient 2. And that's going to be plus or minus 2 and plus or minus 1. And so all the combinations of uh, these, this fraction here would be uh, plus or minus 3 over 2, plus or minus 3 over 1, which is 3 plus or minus 1 over 2, or 1 half, and then plus or minus uh, 1 over 1, which is 1. All right, and then we always uh, start with uh, either positive 1 or negative 1, and test it using the synthetic process. All right, so let's go with positive 1 and test that um, in the synthetic process. So we have 1, and the coefficients are 2, 5, negative 4, and negative 3. Drop the 2 down. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 times 1 is 7. 7 minus 4 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. And negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So we know that 1 is a 0. The resulting polynomial is 2x squared plus 7x plus 3. We'll set that equal to 0, and I believe we can factor this. Um, if we multiply 2 times 3, we'll get 6. And so then what would multiply to 6 and also add up to 7? That would be 6 and 1. So we'll factor this by grouping. That would be 2x squared plus 6x plus 1x plus 3. Greatest common factor in this first group is 2x, leaving us with x plus 3. And then the greatest common factor in the second group is 1, and that leaves us with x plus 3. So then we have x plus 3 common, leaving us with 2x plus 1. When you set those equal to 0, you're going to get x equals negative 3 as a 0, and also x equals negative 1 half. So our three zeros are as follows. Um, negative 3, negative 1 half, and positive 1. Okay, now it says uh, the end behavior. Um, well, let's uh, talk about the polynomial. We know that it is a third degree polynomial, and the leading coefficient is positive. That means this is going to be going up on the right side, but down on the left. So up on the right and down on the left. Well, as x approaches negative infinity, that's on the left side, and the graph is going down, so that means y would be approaching negative infinity. And then as x approaches positive infinity, that's on the right side, the graph is going up on the right, so y would be approaching positive infinity. All right, and for number nine, we're deciding which of these equations here would match the graph over here on the right. Well, first of all, you'll notice that the graph is symmetric across the y-axis. That means it is an even function, and therefore all of the exponents in the polynomial should be even. 
So that would narrow it, narrow it down to choices A or B. But you'll notice that in A, the leading coefficient is negative. So we would be expecting the graph to be upside down. Whereas in B, the leading coefficient is positive, And therefore, it would be right side up. So we would expect that the y values would be going upward towards infinity on both ends. Also notice that we have a y-intercept of negative 3. And it looks like this graph is crossing uh, the y-axis at some negative value. So we've decided that the answer is b. That is the correct equation. All right, for number 10, give a possible factorization of the polynomial based on your knowledge of the graph of the polynomial. Do not multiply the factors. Okay, so let's remind you how this works. Um, first of all, we see that there is a zero at negative two, and uh, the graph seems to be passing through it without uh, leveling out, uh, and it's certainly not a turning point either. So. Um, the zero at negative two would result in a factor of x plus two. So we'll say f of x equals x plus two as one of the factors uh, to take care of the negative two as a zero. We have a turning point here at, looks like at zero. And when it's a turning point, then it's going to be a factor, a multiplicity of two. And so that is going to be x raised to the second power. Okay, x raised to the second power because it is a multiplicity of 2 at 0. Now if you zoom in a little bit on the positive 1, it looks like the graph levels out at 1 and then passes through. So it levels out and then passes through. So that's going to be a multiplicity of 3. All right, so then at 1, the factor would be x minus 1 with a multiplicity of 3. So you'll have x minus 1 to the third. Finally, uh, there's a 0 at positive 2, and that appears to be passing straight through it. So that's going to have a multiplicity of just 1. Um, so the 0 is positive 2, so the factor would be x minus 2. All right, and this is your final result. Okay. In number 11, find all the zeros of the polynomial. All right, first we'll do the P over Q, assuming that we will not have a calculator on this. Um, P is all the factors of 5, and Q is all the factors of 1. So all the factors of 5 are just plus or minus 5 and plus or minus 1. And then that's going to be divided by plus or minus 1. All right, so these are all the possible rational zeros. Okay, now let's try positive 1 in the synthetic process and see if it works. Let's have our coefficients. Drop down the 1. 1 1 times 1 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 times 1 is 5, and then we get 0. All right, so 1 is a 0. The resulting polynomial is x squared plus 2x plus 5. And um, you're not going to be able to factor because we can't find a, a two numbers that would multiply to 5 and add up to 2. So we'll need to use the quadratic formula. So x is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c, all divided by 2 times a. So that's going to be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared is 4. And then 4 times 1 times 5 is 20. All right, so that's, uh, that's, so that's 4 minus 20, all divided by 2. And that's going to be 4 minus 20. That's going to be negative 16, all divided by 2. And then um, 
we have to be careful here. The radical is negative. And when we take the square root of a negative number, that involves the imaginary number i. So the square root of negative 16 is 4i. So that's negative 2 plus or minus 4i all over 2. Reducing that to lowest terms is going to be negative 1 plus or minus 2i. All right, so then our three zeros are as follows. There's going to be one real zero, and that's one, positive one. And then we have two imaginary zeros. That's negative one minus two i, and negative one plus two i. All right, and that concludes the unit six review number one.